Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're looking at something that answers the question, how much do you want to spend on a motherboard with a simple yes? Before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Software Keep. Software Keep is the go-to source for the top selling software products, including a whole range of popular operating systems and productivity suites, including the latest versions of Microsoft Office, Windows 10 and Windows 11. Customers can trust in the unbeatable prices, lifetime product guarantees and 24 seven, 365 day customer service. Downloads are made super simple with their digital download service and you can use code GA20 to save an additional 20% on your order. With a website backed with loads of five star reviews, Software Keep is sure to provide an exceptional shopping experience. So visit the link in the description box below to get started. So today we're looking at the MSI MEG or MEG Z790 Godlike motherboard. This retails for £1200 or $1200 is the cheapest I could find it for online. And this is just the answer, the yes to everything feature wise. It's got insane cooling for like your VRMs. There's 26 plus two phases of power. Um, we've got different Thunderbolt 4 things, got dual 10 gig LAN, Wi Fi 6E, Gen 5 slots. It's any features you can think of, it has it. <laughs> Ones that exist anyway. So today we're going to do a little unboxing an overview and I'm actually going to put it in a system because there's a little additional accessory that I really want to show you guys. Now this is a media sample so you get some documentation that you otherwise wouldn't in a retail one but we're going to get straight into a quick little teaser of the board itself. Oh, it's just absolutely massive. Oh it's so heavy. <sighs> and just going to give you a little brief look before we look into the accessories because there's a lot of money's worth just in that oh gosh, there's so much to cover let's go from the instructions and basic things so we've got instructions we've got like an msi dog tag some additional m.2 quick releases and an additional one with a screw with more of a traditional one i'll add the other one with those so they don't get lost we've got some red and black sata cables here there's one of those is right angled three packs of those then we've got some argb stuff so there's a um, female to two males for the 12 volt. There's a five volt female to one of the kind of three pin ones. You often see those on Fantex products. We have some uh, thermal temperature probes, two packs of those. And then we've got a female five volt addressable to three male addressable. Over here, we have a display port to me display port. This does have Thunderbolt with 40 gig. So you can use that if you wish. So there's one of those cables there. This is a USB 2 extension by the looks of things. A USB-C to type A cable. This is for this little box that I'll show you in a moment. Another display port for Thunderbolt. And then we've also got some antennas for Wi-Fi 6E. There's a MSI a thumb drive with loads of drivers and things on. And last but not least, we have this little screen. So on the Z690 Godlike, they had it all incorporated. It was up by the dim slots and you could do different things like touch screens and COC stats and quick controls and stuff like that. This time they decided to break it out. So you do have a USB-C USB A cable that will go into the bottom there. So you've got magnets on there, so it's obviously gonna you know go on a case or something, but you still will have a cable. Personally, I'd like to have it on a little kickstand with the USB port at the back, like angled on my desk. That's kind of like my phone would be, for example. But with the magnets, the only real option you have is putting it on your case panel. Bringing the good light back in, I'm not really sure where to start to be honest, because there's so much to get going on, but all the mirrored areas you're gonna see will all light up when the board is powered on. On the right hand side, this is where we have, would have the uh, screen on the Z690 version, but we've now got this little control box that I mentioned. So yes, typically it was like that on the older one. There's something under there that I'll actually show you in a minute. So let's have a little look around. We have some ridiculous power by the VRMs, all those chokes, absolutely ridiculous. It even goes further down as well. If I tilt the board, you can just about see those there. So like I said, 26 plus two, so 28 phase of power. Oh, so heavy this board as well. Um, dim slots to the right, this supports up to 128 gigabytes of 7,800 mega transfers per second out of the box. You can OC that. We have seen records being set for memory. So I wouldn't be surprised if we can see people going over that and with a manual overclock on their memory sticks. So we've got our eight pins just above the memory slots. It's not on the left hand side like we traditionally see, but there's just a lot going on here. So they have moved them over slightly. There's two four pin headers. We've got one which is a CPU fan and a pump fan as well. So great for an AIO. We've got a post screen readout. Always good to have. 
And there's also some traditional post LEDs on there as well. Then all the other ports are on a right angle for this board. So we've got a 24 pin, there's a supplemental six pin as well. Last time we saw one of these was a Z690 Hero and that gave extra power to the USB-C. So if you wanted to do some 65 watt charging, two USB-3 internal headers, these are 3.2 Gen 1, I believe. There's also an additional three fan headers on the right hand side and we've got an addressable five volt, six SATA, six gig per second slot. And then going back to the bottom facing us, we've got a whole host of other ports so we've got some ARGB so we've got a 5 volt there's another 12 volt there as well we've got our front panel there's lots of different sensors on there as well some onboard power which is always nice to have two USB 2 headers there's one of the areas for the temperature sensors to go on and then there's a four pin header for a pump and then another four system fans so in total you've got 10 four pin headers on this board there's another adjustable 5 volt on the bottom left and then a 12 volt to the left of that and then we've got our HD audio of course, we've got our LGA 1700 socket. I'm going to use my 13700 with this build just to show you it all lit up. We're not going to do any heavy performance results or anything like this in this video, but to give you an idea of what it's like with all different features and our little touch control box as well. So onto storage and PCI. Of course, the first two are going to be Gen 5 when it's supported. The first M.2 cover has a nice little quick release. Press on the left hand side and then it pops up and it locks down with these little pins which is quite a cool little feature there's some little push pins as well so when the cover's back on you will get some rgb thermal pad on each side and it does have the quick release that i mentioned earlier it does feel actually very flimsy of a latch but it might just be because this is a media unit it's been passed around quite a lot if you want more than one slot we do have some additional screws to take off you can see we have another two m.2s there and then we've got another two there as well all of these again are lit up with the push pins so you can have rgb on those covers so we've got an additional four slots these can go up to 80 mil drives on these ones and if that's not enough for you then we've got another little section here with a little push bit that will then lift off to reveal another two 80 mil drives so in total you can do seven M.2 drives on this one motherboard. So if we take off the other slot as well, there you go, you can see all of the slots available. Just as a quick side note as well, there's only one that can take 110. So do make sure you're getting 80 mil drives if you're gonna fill this thing up. I do wanna quickly mention how much I love that quick release for the uh, drive cover. I've used my Seagate 530 for the last few builds. Been swapping it in and out of systems because it's the fastest drive I've got on hand and something like that on other boards would have been something to make life a lot easier. A little bit tricky to get that on, but should you be hardline walk calling your system, for example, putting your OS in that slot would be a good idea because getting at the uh, quick release one when you've got your system plumbed in might be quite difficult. Let's now check out the rear IO. Starting at the top, we've got MSI's smart button. There's a flash BIOS button and also a clear CMOS, always good buttons to have on any motherboard. Two and a half gig LAN, we've also got a 10 gig LAN. We've got a total of seven USB A's, these are 10 gigabits. These are USB 3.2 Gen 2. There's also a Type-C port in there as well. It's also USB 3.2 Gen 2. We've got two USB-C ports. These will be for Thunderbolt 4, so 40 gig slots. There's two mini display ports in, so this will take the signal from your graphics card back into the motherboard with those cables that I showed you in the box. Then that will give you the signal out for the USB-C for Thunderbolt 4. We've then got our Wi-Fi antenna, so as I said, Wi-Fi 6E. And then we've got some audio and an SP diff. Okay, so that was a look around the board itself. Now it's time to get this into a system so I can show you just what this touchscreen does. Okay guys, so I've now got the motherboard installed into the case. It's the Etho 2 Pro from Fantex. Even I think this isn't big enough, this case, to be perfectly honest, it's just a mahoosive motherboard to the point that I've had to take off some of the where you'd add in the hard drives to actually be able to work the cables. 24 pin and the eights are the only ones that I've actually managed to connect, minus the front panel stuff. Something to bear in mind, you do need to make sure that that motherboard tray on the case is nice and flat if you want to get all your extra um, USB ports and things inside. Um, but nevertheless, it is installed. I have got the little Envision dashboard down here for us to look at. I'm going to plug it in because there's something I just want to point out before we actually look at the software. So once you just connect that to any USB port, it will then start up. And do, a very, and do a very cheesy and tinny um, dragon effect when it starts up. Really not a fan of that, to be honest. I think where you're paying £1,200 for a board, you expect everything to be the highest of quality, then you hear a little tinny effect like that. Just kind of brings the whole value down, I think, personally. But now we're into the MSI Center software, which is where we'll get our Envision dashboard option. 
that's something you do have to download if you haven't already. It's very much like the MSI AO that we looked at before. Um, you get all your different settings for the screens and things in this MSI center. So we can do the display on or off. You can mute as well. So that's something I would do personally. So I have that effect every time we turn it on. And then we've got different hardware monitors. So we've got temperature, fan speed. So you can pick any of these and then just press apply. Let's just take this CPU states for an example. Now you can see that's not actually the right way around. Now we can change that. We can go to direction. And then we can do horizontal or portrait. So you allow the rotation from portrait to landscape, but not which direction you want. Because I'm not going to want to see all of this cable looping back around in my system that goes underneath it. We'll have to like tuck it underneath, for example. I'm going to want to have it as little as possible, which is just the end barrel there that goes into the actual thing. So. There we go, just a bit of extra cable to look at as well. Anyway, going back to the settings and things, so it will cycle through what you've picked. So for example, let's pick some voltages, go for the CPU voltage, apply to then display what we've chosen to show from the software. So we've got our core temperature. Then to the voltage and then whatever else you'll pick after that as well. Go along, we can just pick different designs as well to go with that, something a little bit different. And you can also add videos or images as well. So let's say we want a GIF, you can apply that. So then if you don't like to have any stats or anything, you can display an image or an animation instead. And um, personally for me, I'd like to see the kind of core clock and stuff like that, especially if you don't have a screen on the AO that says it anyway. You can use this as a clock as well. So let's go for, pick something different, this one here. And you're going to have live weather as well, which is quite nice if you want to add in your location. So I've had a little bit of a play around. I've just got a CPU usage, frame rate and temperatures on there now. I also changed the background that goes with it. As I did say, it is a touch screen. Some media controls. You've also got buttons for calculated internet, so that will load up on your PC. It'd be nice if you could swipe it, but you actually have page numbers at the bottom instead. You've got some quick options for Xbox, RGB settings in there as well. So you can change your motherboard to RGB from here, which is pretty cool. This button here acts as a quick button to hide any programs that are on your desktop window. Now that reminds me of the Asus, I think it was called the Front Bay that came out a few years ago. There was a button on there that did a very similar thing as well. Uh, very good if you're watching certain things that you don't want other people seeing, you can just quickly uh, minimize things with. <laughs> then the last ones are for like, any bits of overclocking and software that are installed on MSI Center. So if we go to the next page, we'll see that one, which is for the live update, which will then bring you straight into the MSI Center with one press. On the basic one, you can do like a simple countdown or a stopwatch. So that's a quick look through the different options. There are a few things I do want to talk about though before we actually end out the video. First of all, the Envision dashboard. Cool little nifty thing. Um, I think it's certainly easier than having it on the motherboard like we saw on the Z690. Um, but there are a few caveats with it. I'm not a fan of the sound effect at all. I think it really does bring down the value of the overall package. And then the USB cable not giving us a rotation for, you know, being able to flip it 180 is a little bit of a downside. If you could do that, then um, you could use a right angle USB-C port so you'd hardly see any cable at all. You could just really get that really short so you don't have the uh, you know the length of the normal standard cable. Um, price wise, £1,200. I can't really see the ideal person that this is for. Do you love gaming that much that you need a £1,200 motherboard? Maybe there are some people, of course, that will have no budget when it comes to building a PC, so they just want to get the best possible board. So another reason for it there. Another little cool thing I just want to mention is the postcode screen on the top of the motherboard. When you're into Windows, this will actually change to a readout for a thermal temperature probe that's on the motherboard. Something a little bit different and just saves it sitting on the same postcode all the time. If you're going to be doing some heavy overclocking, you do have dip switches on the board as well. So you can save going into the bus and disabling features. You can just do it straight on the board. Uh, but there are other boards on the market, such as the Asus ROG Apex. That would be, I think, a far better contender for overclocking. ATX form factor as well, so you don't have that extra to contend with. And the fact that it's almost half the price of this board, I think 670 at the time of recording. So it's quite, you know, hard to justify for just an overclocking board as well. Finding an ideal use case scenario for this board, I think is really difficult. Content creation would be a good contender because you do have the seven M.2 slots, but I think it's going to be a case of if you do lots of little things like you do content creation, you're a gamer, maybe a little bit of overclocking, you know, on the weekends, then maybe this 
board will blend all those three things in together. But for one specific use case, it's a little bit difficult to justify. So thank you all for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I will leave links to this board in the description box below if you happen to find the need to actually pick one up. Um, big thank you to MSI for sending this over for me to look at. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.